Hopefully, you're watching this video in some blissful future where PC parts are plentiful, miners make minuscule money, and scalpers stop scalping. Unfortunately, I'm making this video in the great parts shortage of 2021. If you have or can get a good deal on an R9290X, this video is for you. The AMD R9290X was released in 2013 and was the flagship of that era. Offering comparable performance to the Nvidia heavyweights of the time, the relationship between AMD and console gaming has ensured that this card has remained relevant long after the original GTX Titan was written off as obsolete. Based on the second generation GCN architecture, the R9290X was one of the few gaming cards in the 200 series not to be a rebrand of an earlier card, although it was later re-released as the R9390X in 2015 with more VRAM and higher clock speeds. Launched at about £450, I bought this from a used tech retailer here in the UK for £55 in December 2020. This was a pretty good price, as I see them going on eBay frequently for close to £100, though I'd recommend holding out for a better deal considering the age of the card. The version I have here is an ASUS manufactured version of the reference card using the notorious blower cooler and has 4GB of VRAM, a huge amount in 2013 but merely adequate for most modern games. I'm testing on the same system as I did the other two video cards in this series, with a Ryzen 3 3100 and 8GB of DDR4 3000. I should point out that the PSU in this system is a 600W silver rated unit from Aerocool, which by most accounts is borderline for this card. If you have an older, less efficient CPU, like uh, Intel Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge, you might want to consider a PSU upgrade as well, or a more efficient card instead. Can it run Cyberpunk? Why, yes. Yes, it can. At 720 low, we can get a pretty respectable frame rate, even in more complex scenes, with combat even breaking 80 FPS at times. This makes for an average of 65 and 1% lows of 37. If you want a little more fidelity from your visuals, jumping to 1080 low cuts your average in half, with 1% lows down to 23. No, I still haven't had a chance to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Between Cyberpunk, Rocket League and benchmarking, I just don't seem to have time. Happily though, it actually runs on this card. Despite my best efforts with other 200 series Radeons, which don't have the full DirectX 12 feature set, this is the only one of the three tested that actually opens the game. The built-in benchmark, running in 1080 medium, records an average of 41 FPS and 1% lows of 24. Horizon Zero Dawn's PC port hasn't proven to run quite as well as the PS4 original on equivalent hardware, possibly down to VRAM limitations. This card still doesn't get us 100% of the way to a locked 30fps at 1920x1080, with averages of 47 but 1% lows of just 23. Running the medium at quality settings above medium requires more horsepower than we have here. In this test I played at 1080 high and counted an average of 31 FPS with lows of 14. Dropping to medium or low would help, but the lighting and atmosphere of the game are dramatically different and I can't really recommend it. It is included with Game Pass right now, so if you're a subscriber give it a try for yourself. Playing Forza Horizon 4 at 1080 medium settings on an R9290X results in a very smooth experience. As usual, I have to resort to the built-in benchmark, which records a GPU score of 88 FPS average and 67 minimum.
As usual, I have to specify that this game is still in development and as tested at the end of February 2021, there still seems to be some room for optimization, but Valheim is still unreasonably demanding on the i9-290X. At 1080 high settings, averages creep up over 50 and lows stick almost perfectly to 30 FPS. On the flip side, Fortnite runs incredibly well on the 290X. If you want a high FPS experience, running with competitive settings returns an average of 195 and lows of 131. If on the other hand you don't have a fancy monitor, you can enjoy some better visuals instead without compromising FPS. Using the high preset with view distance set to epic, the average drops to 84 and 1% lows to 63. Once again, I must make my excuses as to why my Warzone footage is just of me running around and dying. In this case, I'm going to blame it on my shitty wireless keyboard. What isn't shitty is the R9290X, which manages to run remarkably well in 1080 at low settings. Averages hit 83 and 1% lows stay well above 60. As with other cars in this series, Doom Eternal is still a great time on the 290X. Thanks to the extra horsepower, it's possible to turn up the quality to the high preset and still pull an average of over 100 FPS with 1% lows of 83. If you've been watching other videos in this series, you might remember that Valorant doesn't present a strong argument for spending more on premium GPUs. This time the R9-290X scored an average of 181 and 1% 1 lows of 123. Basically we're talking about margins of error differences between the three cards. Finally, just to keep score, the Time Spy graphics score comes back at 3879, over 80% higher than the R9 280 and more than double the R9 270X. Even at the somewhat crazy time of writing, R9 290 and 290X eBay auctions are closing at similar prices to those of R9 280s and 280Xs, and honestly, I can't see why. Either people are overvaluing the 280s or woefully undervaluing the 290s. Despite being made on the same 28 nanometer process, that's just over 1 nano inch for my American viewers, the 290X blows the cheaper GCN1 card away in almost every test and, in my opinion, is well worth the money. One word of advice, try and get yourself a board partner card with a better heatsink. The default fan settings on this reference cooler ran very quiet, but incredibly hot. Setting a reasonable fan curve kept temperatures under control, but results in the typical Dr. Nick's juice maker level of noise. Hope this has been useful for you. If you enjoyed the video, let me know below. While you're down there, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.